5 a.m. We have just stopped to get our coffee before we start the epic road trip. Um, we're going most of the way today and we're finishing off tomorrow. So, yes, I'm wearing this dress again because it's so comfy. It's just going to be an, a long day sitting in the car. So, why not be comfortable? Um, so, what is it? Grinchmas Day 22. Um, I also have, um, I've got my advent calendar in here somewhere, so we'll do that. And we're doing our Q&A today, but I'll show you some parts of our journey. Um, a lot of people driving for 12 hours, a lot of countries are not even that big. Um, obviously Australia is, China is, Russia is, the United States is. Um, but yeah, Africa, there's a lot of countries that you wouldn't be driving 12 hours and only make it just a tiny bit up, up the way. So anyway, um, hopefully I can find some interesting footage to share with you today along with the December Q&A. So thanks to everyone that has put in questions on my Instagram story. I look forward to answering those. like a one street town I think this little coffee shop is um, good and they sell like wood bath and things but yeah here we go the butcher having a busy trade the police little supermarket I've been past the school probably see a fire brigade and that'll be about it. It's a little house. Oh, it's the CWA, the Country Women's Association. Here's a motel if you can't make it another two hours to Brisbane. Which I would always choose to do that. Okay, the first question is from Liv4. What are you hoping to see from the Lux houses in 2023? Style of bags, colours. Well, I hear that the Panettone colour of the year is like a magenta pink next year. So um, even though Valentino did a big collection this year, I would expect to see some more of that. Um, I think we'll stop seeing the lilacs um, next year, which is fine because there's been probably three or four solid years of my favourite colour. So. Um, yeah, I'm happy to see what else comes. Don't want to throw out there what I want to see because I'm just happy to kind of discover it as it comes. I think that's the fun in fashion. So I do expect to see some pink, definitely. The Glitzy Housewife. Have you always liked nice bags? I remember starting with Fiorelli, Saatchi, Oriton, LV. Yes, I have always liked nice bags, but I haven't always had the budget or... Um, access to buy designer bags. One of my favorite bags was a little evening bag I used to take clubbing that had black feathers on it. Um, and like I'd always take these little extra top handled bags to the nightclubs and then cloak them. I don't even know if they do cloaking in nightclubs now, but you used to be able to cloak your coat and your handbag and then just, you know, shove some cash in your bra. And <laughs> It was just for walking between venues. So yes, I have. Um, I probably started out like with more expensive bags such as Guess. Yeah, Guess. And I've actually got a video on my channel um, with my first Guess bag. If I can remember to link it, I will, because I repurchased it off eBay. I found it. Um, Coach and then yeah, I actually bought LV before I bought Coach and then I only bought one bag from Coach and then the rest has just been... <laughs> or should I say... <laughs> um, the Glitzy Housewife again, $100,000 to buy designer items. What do you get? Um, with $100,000, I'd be buying jewellery. I'd buy all the jewels that I would never thought that I'd be able to buy. $100,000 really won't go that far based on what I want. A big emerald ring... I reckon 
that would be the best part of fifty thousand dollars um you know add in some nice diamond studs and maybe a bangle that's probably it it won't go too far which sounds revolting but yeah i, I wouldn't spend a hundred thousand dollars on handbags definitely not well not in one go <laughs> favorite memory of buying a luxury item Oh, it would have to be buying my Chanel handbag in New York. I had the day to myself. It was a beautiful sunny day. I was like, if I leave this place and I don't come back, you know, it will be a waste. So I hadn't touched my credit card yet and off I went. And I, I didn't have anything in particular in mind, but I spotted it in Bergdorf's and I didn't want to buy it from there. I wanted to buy it from Chanel. So I went to Chanel and um yeah purchased the bag and it was it was brilliant and i remember just swinging it around like a child on that day walking back to the hotel thinking what a brilliant holiday um jayshi what's the best lesson in luxury purchasing that you learned this year um it's the same lesson i learned over and over again and sometimes forget which is just buy what you like, forget about things that are hyped, unless you really love them, and figure out what your classics and what your neutrals are rather than what everybody says that you should have. I don't have a beige bag in my collection. My black bags are less than classic, I would say, and that works for me. It might not work for you, but you need to figure out what works for you. Um, the Thick Titan sock shoe sock shoe or sock sock shoe shoe definitely sock sock shoe shoe Who puts this shoes on sock shoe sock shoe <laughs> <laughs> apparently our neighbor does because i asked him when i saw that question come through last night i asked him and he goes yeah sock shoe sock shoe i'm like That's ridiculous. i know <laughs> Okay, these next set of questions are from the Thick Titan as well. The Ethic Titan? The Thick I don't know. I, I can hardly um, read. Uh, any thoughts on early retirement? Yes, there's always thoughts about it, but um, no. Uh, I don't, I, for me, early retirement would be anything before in Australia. 67 and a half, I think, is classified as early retirement, which is not early. So I'd say definitely before 67 and a half, but not anytime soon. Are you a lefty? No, I'm a righty. Have you ever been to Texas? I have not, but Mr. Addiction has. Uh, do you watch John Oliver? No. What does your perfect slice of pizza look like? Um, a perfect slice of pizza for me is very simple. So it's literally an amazing Neapolitan sauce with some beautiful um, fior de latte cheese and basil. That's it. That would be perfect. Um, but those three ingredients to get perfectly right, obviously in the base, is very hard. What were you going to say? What's the weirdest video YouTube has suggested to you recently? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody that I haven't watched for a long, long time keeps popping up in my recommended feeds in the luxury space. So it's not weird. And I'm just like, go away. How do I stop that from happening? Hey, Chris has asked if I'm driving to Melbourne. No, Chris, I am not driving to Melbourne, but I would fly to Melbourne. Uh, Debbie, not a question. Just wanted to say you are much loved. Have a wonderful holiday. Thanks, Debbie. You too. Um, Debbie again, with a Fendi made to order event, what would happen if you didn't like the sketches and the price? Um, then you would just have an awkward conversation about not wanting to proceed. And I say it's awkward because there's such a fanfare to get to that point. And then this, the time that you have to actually design your piece and and then get your sketch and then get surprised with the price like it, 
it can be overwhelming and my advice for people would be to know what it's going to cost before you even accept the appointment and if you accept the appointment then you find out what it's going to cost and it doesn't work for you don't do it because you'll just feel terrible it'll feel like an opportunity lost and that's not how it should feel uh, Tiny Mole 101 does using a non-brand name handbag make you feel icky <laughs> I'd be lying if I said no <laughs> um, I think in the car at the moment I've got my Louis Vuitton GM Neverfull with all my IT bits in it I've got a Valentino bag with all my cosmetics bits. Then I've got my Fendi Sunshine Shopper with all my other bits in it. So, yeah, I don't, I probably don't even have a non brand name handbag to bring with me. <laughs> um, MJLN05, fave holiday destination in Australia and why? Oh, look, it depends what kind of holiday. I guess there's a couple of places. For me, if you're looking for a beachside holiday, I'd recommend the Sunshine Coast. Um, I don't go to beaches to shop luxury, so if you wanted the luxury side of things, the Gold Coast, but the Gold Coast is, I just don't think it's a very nice place. There's lots of violence and drugs and it's dirty and it has nice beaches and what have you, but not where I'd go for a beachside holiday. Sunshine Coast is much nicer, more relaxed, but yes, it doesn't have the shopping element, but you can drive to Brisbane. It's an hour away. Um, if you want tropics, then I would probably suggest... It's hard, actually, because they're country tropics. They're not, like, lavish tropics. Um... I'm going to skip that bit. For a city stay, I would always choose Melbourne. I just love the vibe of Melbourne. Sydney's a beautiful city, but Melbourne has my heart. Um, and then in terms of like going, you know, out west, there are some amazing places to see in the middle of Australia. Um, so out at Uluru and up in Darwin and Broome as well. So lots of different options. Eileen asks best road trip. Normally I hate road trips so best road trip. We normally just like drive to get there. We don't stop along the way and it's too far. yeah we're just on a mission normally and the reason that we drive is because we need to take certain things with us. So can't really answer that one. Uh, Eileen asks, how many hours to go? Um, probably... Eight. Eight. Eight hours left. Uh, Lizzie C, are you afraid of spiders? I mean, you do live in Australia. Um, I'm not afraid of them as in I think they're going to attack me. I just don't like having them around. So I get a, a pest treatment for the house once a year professionally and then Mr. Addiction does it again um, every six months and so we don't tend to see spiders at home unlike Connor and those massive huntsmen that he's had. Uh, do you YouTube full time Rhonda asks I love your channel. No I don't but in December I have been pretty much full time and thank you very much. Um, Scarabage, not a question, but you should join Connor in Paris and vlog and laugh all the time. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, I've only spent a couple of full days in Paris. I'd love to go back and I was sick on one day, so I feel like I got ripped off. So definitely need to go back. Which bags you'd like to test drive, like you're not ready to take the plunge, but still. Oh, I'm an all-in kind of person. Like, I don't test drive anything. If I want it, then I don't want to just try it. So, yeah, there's nothing that I would just be lukewarm about. Uh, what would you like to get from Connor as a present from Paris? Money is no object. <laughs> um, I 
I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be the best, but I would love one of those beautiful baked goods, you know, the patisseries with the, like the massive macarons. That's what I would love because they, they're just amazing. And a French baguette, they just don't taste anywhere near as good anywhere else. Tips on how to reach your level of self-esteem. You're fab in every aspect. Well, thank you very much. Um, it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey, still learning. Um, I think this year, doing this styling course has really taught me how to appreciate how to dress for where I'm at right now, as opposed to trying to be someone I'm not, um, or trying to keep up with trends or whatever and just kind of go there's things that really work for me and stick with those um, I think that's a really hard thing to learn when you're younger because you're so much more caught up in the trends so and I found it really tough when I was young and I imagine that people still do so yeah just find ways of making current season trends work for you and your body shape Forever Dreaming. Hi, Sapna. Uh, can you share any reflections of 2022, if you've had any, or any lessons? Um, reflections, I haven't. <laughs> any lessons I've learned? I think I might have answered this one is, yeah, just um, go with your gut, follow what you think is right. And I guess the good thing that I have learned from talking to you guys about my decisions is that usually if I think it's a good idea, um, people who know me or know my collection will be able to kind of give me encouragement. So that mohair baguette, like you guys are the ones saying you need that in your collection, that really works. Whereas um, if I hadn't have had that conversation or perhaps you hadn't have been around my channel very much, I probably wouldn't have had that level of encouragement. So I guess if you want advice you know take it but it's just advice you don't have to follow it so it's good to kind of talk through things I think um, definitely and when you share sometimes you get great tips on how to save money and things like that too so find yourself some friends that you can chat with Hannah hi Hannah um, she has asked what's the most important lesson you've learned in 2022 um, most important lesson look I haven't reflected on that per se but I think um, it's probably a lesson that I have learned over and over which is just say yes um, a lot of great things happened this year because I said yes and you know I've met some wonderful people we had the Fendi event like lots of cool things so yeah just say yes and figure it out afterwards uh, Hannah also asked if you could be anywhere right now where would you be right where I am <laughs> what's the best Christmas surprise you've ever had um, getting my Louis Vuitton petite boîte chapeau from Mr Addiction um, especially when we had a hundred dollar budget and we were supposed to be buying fun things and he literally just pulled out this kite that I bought him <laughs> that year and said, why do we have this kite? And I'm like, remember that was the year that you bought me that handbag? So yes, I was absolutely shocked. I was not expecting that at all. So it was cool. Uh, Connor asks a question for Mr. Addiction. Sum up being married to Dale in three words. You're not going to say it. Why don't you say something nice? It's a very expensive adventure. That's four. No, it's not. Very expensive adventure. Okay, very expensive adventure. See, no love in that comment at all. No. No. It's a luxury channel, not a love channel. It's a luxury channel, not a love channel. <laughs> Carolina, can you make a video about your style evolution from this year? Love how fun your wardrobe is. Yeah, I can. I guess coming into summer now, we're kind of doing the full loop of season. So, yes, I have done one. I can probably do a follow-up, yes. Uh, Jane loves LV. Hi, Jane. 
uh, favorite adult beverage for Christmas and or New Year's other than champagne? Sparkling Shiraz is a great festive Christmas drink because... Thanks, Mr. Addiction, Addiction for remembering to bring it. Um, Sparkling Shiraz because it's festive and in Australia it's cold. So we have it cold and but it's red wine and so you get the benefits of having something a little bit more festive and full bodied but it's cold as well and it has bubbles so it's perfect. Okay, Labatina asks the ugliest bag available for sale now. Let's just say my favorite brand, Hermes. <laughs> There's a couple, it's gotta be the Evelyn. It has to be. It has to be. Such a lovely name for such an ugly bag. Okay, Zach Seaton. Hi, Zach. Um, you've probably been asked this before, but do you have a dream Fendi bag? Um, not one that I know of, Zach. I think, like, if there was a piece, I think I could call myself a little bit of a collector when it comes to Fendi. Um, I would love one of the hand-in-hand -hand pieces, like the ones that are made from raffia or lace. I mean, that feathered baguette that I saw in the Sydney boutique was amazing. Um, I really don't know. There's so many options. Like, there's not one thing that I think, oh, I definitely want that bag in that particular leather and that colour. I just, it's not how I kind of roll. Okay, this one is from Forever Rosebud. Hello. Um, Honouring Grinchy, does travelling for Christmas make you grinchier or happier about this season? Um, I left home when I was like 18 and I've been travelling for Christmas most years, so it kind of goes with the territory. Um, so it doesn't make me grinchier, it's normal. I like being home for Christmas. I, I don't like being on holidays when everyone else is on holidays in holiday places because people just lose their temperature and temperature patience temper that's what I wanted to say and it's not actually festive it's just stressful so I'd prefer to stay at home for Christmas and then travel after Christmas um, and we've done that a few times and it's been really nice but it doesn't make me feel great you know um, let's see if she says Portugal. If you could choose another place to have a second meet up with your subbies, where would it be and why? Um, oh God, I mean, there's so many places that I could go. Um, I don't know, probably, probably London or New York. That there's a lot of people in my demographics. Um, that are based in Europe and the US. So I pick a couple of big cities uh, in those vicinities and then, yeah, that'd be nice. So Portugal can wait. <laughs> never say never, for sure. Um, this one is from Name. I kept waiting and waiting to grab a bag I really wanted and someone bought it. I'm devastated. I ended up buying myself another bag I wanted, but nothing can compare to the one that got away. My question is, have you ever waited too long and missed out on an absolute beauty of a bag? No, I haven't. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm not one that gets caught up with the one that got away and I don't go hunting for them because there's always something fabulous that comes along. Um, that will distract me and that's the fickleness I guess of this interest is for me I'm not a traditional collector I don't need to have certain things there will be things that are made in certain colors or textiles or designs that I love um, and if I love them and I can get them I will and if I can't then I just move on to the next thing um, and I think that's the fickleness of it because I don't have to have certain things, if that makes sense. I'm sorry that you missed out on yours. I hope you can find it, maybe on the pre-loved market. Okay, Kimmy asks, how do you become a successful YouTuber? You might have to ask a successful YouTuber, Kimmy. Um, 
but my opinion on who I think successful YouTubers are is that they appeal to a broad demographic of people, a broad demographic of budgets, a broad demographic of fashion houses and styles. I don't do any of that. Nothing about my channel is broad. Um, it's very specific. Um, I don't talk about things that I'm not interested in buying. You won't see me do videos around the best bags for under $1,000 or $2,000. I just, that's not what I'm interested in. So that's not what I'll talk about on my channel. I think the most successful channels are the ones that have that really broad appeal. Um, and if you want to be a successful YouTuber, then you've got to be able to reach the most people. I, I don't feel like being niche in an already very niche part of YouTube, the luxury community, is going to make you as successful as, you know, a less niche channel. And if you say niche instead of niche, let me know in the comments. It's Ginny asks, um, what's your biggest pet peeve? Insincerity. That's it, pretty much. Um, people who sit on the fence, who, when they ask their opinion, don't give it. Um, yeah, lack of authenticity, uh, personally. And, you know, it's very hard to do that properly and consistently all the time and not annoy people or piss people off. But, yeah, I just find I'm drawn to people who keep it real. Life is a zoo. Do you spread clotted cream or jam first on your scone? I'm um, always a jam first and top with the cream. Um, and we don't have clotted cream here. We just use whipped cream, like pouring cream that's whipped with um, electric mixers with a little bit of icing sugar. So, yeah, I don't know what the difference is between that and clotted cream, but we wouldn't call it clotted cream. Okay, Jessica has asked... What would you crown as your luxury purchase of the year of the items that you've actually received and used? Mm. It has to be my Dior wicker bag. Um, to find that, to buy it after I said I was not buying anything from Dior and I've really enjoyed wearing that. I haven't bought it on this trip because I'm not going anywhere where I can really wear it, but um i think that that bag yeah would have to be my top buy for having bought it in february so i've had it most of the year um and used it and styled it up i wore it in winter it's a great bag i love it so i'll put a picture of it in over here so you know which one i'm talking about my good friend bella how will you punish your flower shorts wearing hubby for trashing the purple baguette well, I'll just buy another one. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Um, Carolina, uh, advice for creating a great wardrobe. Oh. Um, do a styling course. Um, figure out what shapes work for you. Clean out your wardrobe. Um, things that you don't enjoy wearing, things that don't fit you very well, get rid of all of that. And then look at what's left, look at the colours you're drawn to um, and get some advice then around things that might be missing from your wardrobe, um, colours that work best for your complexion and skin and um, patterns or prints that work for you and then you'll have an eye for what to buy um, and yeah I think it's it really helps to put some reasoning around what's in your wardrobe Bella do fish actually talk to each other I'm sure they have some kind of bubble language or you know some kind of like vibration that they send to each other but I, I don't know what do you think <laughs> oh, Bella again if lilac is your favorite color what's your second favorite it'd be between pink or green um, or both, if I can choose both. Does your hubby let you drive on this long trip? Normally, yes, I would do a lot of the driving, but today we are towing a trailer. So this car has um, a driver assist. So when you kind of 
move toward the side of the lane it vibrates and you can't turn it off and it pulls you to correct but you pull against it as a natural urge it's really really off-putting so with the trailer on maybe not we'll see uh, did you ever have to come up with thousands of weird questions for a friend's Q&A? <laughs> yes, actually, I have. <laughs> Connor, I'm talking to you. Still, Bella, uh, would you like another MTO opportunity? And if so, would it be a baguette? Yes, I would like another MTO opportunity. I'm going to see how my um, baguette trunk comes along. Um, if I really like that style, I might just do baguette trunks as part of my MTO, I one thing I learned from doing the Celeria one is after having all of the options available, Celeria Peekaboo one, that I would prefer to have all the options available. I like that really divergent thinking and then editing down rather than having a real limit to start with. So um, yeah, I would definitely like to do another MTO and a baguette would not be out of the question at all. And Bella asks, how does it feel to have influenced so many people into Fenny? Um, well, look, I don't know if that's a fact or not. I know that there are a lot of people who share with me their Fendi purchases or their Fendi wish lists. Um, and for that, I, I feel really happy that people have found bag styles or colours that kind of speak to them and give them um, a way to reflect their own personal brand in their way of dressing that perhaps they might not have considered before because of the main three brands so yeah and it's really nice to have that connection with people like we all have this similar affliction um, and yeah that's really nice it's like this little club like a fraternity the Fendi fraternity so that's really cool Okay, still Bella, have you had friendships ruined by the other person's envy? Yes, one that I know of, um, who was very upfront in saying that that's exactly why she um, didn't want to spend time together as friends anymore, which was painful um, and sad, but I respect the fact that she had to make a choice for her own health and to be honest it was a lot of work for me um, to minimize my interests when we were together as well so yeah I guess they say you have friends for a reason a season or a lifetime and that remains true What's your biggest and best relationship advice? Biggest and best relationship advice? Well, mine is, um, I don't think your significant other needs to play all the roles in your life. So you can have friends, you can have work colleagues, you can have a counsellor, you can have a coach, and you can have your life partner. And if they're all the same person, um, I think that creates a lot of problems. So that's my advice. Uh, Deb from Wild Unfiltered. When are you coming to the UK? <laughs> soon, I hope, Deb. Soon. If not for a stopover next year, soon. Uh, Eileen, how many coffees on a 12-hour road trip? Um, not many. Just kind of the normal one to start the day. A, because there's never any good coffee on the road anyway. <laughs> so you get a good coffee when you leave. And then even if you were craving a coffee, you wouldn't have it because it's just revolting. So we'd normally get some kind of sugary drink, which I don't usually drink soft drink, but something that gets me through is the, um, the Sweps Agram, like blood orange um, fizzy drink is really yummy. Um, or the um, raspberry cordial like something super sweet like it just gets you gets you through um, road trip playlist pretty much anything Spotify. Spotify will just tell us what what we like and then we'll listen to that okay I have no hope of pronouncing I think this is multiple names in one long piece so I don't know 
how to break it up. But the question is, hey, beautiful, what's the biggest risk you ever took in your life? Um, I think probably leaving leaving home so early to go somewhere I didn't even know anything about because it, it was yeah it was I wouldn't have been able to afford to get back home or um I had to make it work and I never thought that it wouldn't work so yeah I think um things that are scary uh it's good it's scary for a reason because you're testing yourself and once you know that you're testing yourself then you rise to the occasion at least that's what i've found so great question uh conrad's closet if it's brown flush it down if it's yellow let it mellow that's not a question connor <laughs> on your business page as well <laughs> and no i don't agree flush everything is a sugar cane town is it yeah yeah so the main industry here is sugar made famous by the children's backpacker hostel yeah sadly there was a backpacker hostel here where people used to go and work in the local agricultural industry and they would stay there and there was a terrible fire that killed a lot of people this is yeah like a little little country town beautiful country town it's very cute it's usually a lot of people with caravans will pull over here and have a coffee um and it's not isis as in isis it's it's um the local region called Isis Regional Council, it used to be, I think. Yeah. So you can see some of the old buildings. And they've got McDonald's, which is always a winner. So Eileen has asked a video on my recent Vlogmas where Mr. Addiction rates my handbags and she has a question for you mm -hmm. if you had to buy me a surprise bag for Christmas which store would you go into okay and what would you buy the latest bags but it would be a Louis Vuitton so is Louis Vuitton your favorite luxury brand well it's what I call luxury the others I don't see as luxury the others as in Fendi and do you know any other brands yeah yeah, yeah Chanel Chanel yeah what else oh, I don't know do I? come on come on he's smiling it's not a motorbike, so I'm not interested. Yeah, uh, I feel the same. So Min has asked if Mr. Addiction is in the engineering field because of the way that he talked about my bags in his rating of the bags. And I said, yes, he is. He likes, he likes things to be practical and precise and appreciate certain design elements. They just have high standards. He has high standards. Especially in the, your wonderful wife selection. We're talking about handbags, not bags. <laughs> Just had some roadworks, which is not unusual on these roads. You can see Australia Post truck up ahead, probably full of Christmas presents, helping Santa out. Okay, Belinda asks, best things to do in Brisbane if you're holidaying, no kids. Um, I think Brisbane is 
just a good place to wander around. Um, it's a good place to actually use the e-scooters, I think, because you can go all around the waterfront um, because the city is surrounded by the river. And so you can just scoot around and go to different eateries and um, have drinks and I guess do reconnaissance for dinner. Um, Brisbane is like an hour from the Sunshine Coast and an hour from the Gold Coast so it's a good central spot to be. I think it's really nice for shopping. It's not big shopping, it's small shopping but it's nice in that way that it's not overwhelming and hugely crowded. Um, I, I don't think Brisbane is a holiday destination. I think it's a weekend getaway kind of place. That's my view. A question from Meredith is what kind of content do you want to see in 2023? Um, I like to see commentary on new releases. I like to see how people evolve their collections, their decision making processes. I love collaborations and talking about things or topics that are pertinent to our interests, collective interests. Um, yeah, I, I am probably going to refine my YouTube subscriptions a little more next year, um, just because there's a lot of rubbish. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I'm not into, you know, like clickbait. And when I say clickbait, I mean, I ruined my bag and it's not really ruined. Or someone got kicked out of Chanel for farting. Like, who cares? We've just arrived in Miriam Vale, home of the famous mud crab Sanger. Or translation home of the mud crab sandwich uh, which is a two pieces of white bread in heavily buttered with um, crab flesh like saltwater crab I think we're approaching the servo aka fuel station service station that sells them Mud Crab Sanger. Mr. Addiction couldn't have driven faster if he tried. Time to stop at a roadhouse. The pink roadhouse, of course, just for you, Meredith. <laughs> Do you need to go? Party mix and oh, they're called cheekies now. Okay. That's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, and do they have like orange in here? No, it's guava. Annoying. Hot box taco. Fried goodies. Pies. Well, it isn't a road trip unless you get a sausage roll, which is sausage meat in puff pastry, effectively, and then you add sauce. So I have my um. Alan's Party Mix. If you're not from Australia, you probably won't be familiar. This is what's called strawberries and cream. It's shaped kind of like a strawberry and it's got this white kind of gummy underside. One of my favourites. Mm. And then, would you like a banana? You have a banana. Tastes like banana. Then we have milk bottles, 
doesn't taste like milk. Um, red frog, which is just like a red gummy. Then like gummy bears. What are they called? Are they not gummy bears? They're people. What are they called? Don't know. They're called jelly babies. Oh, jelly babies. Jelly babies. Um, black cat. Not many people like these. If you like black cats, you're pretty much guaranteed to be the only person in the group that does. So you never have to fight anyone for these. Roadside stop, toilets, shop. This has got all my luggage in it. <laughs> so we got a still a long way to go till we finish driving tonight. west of here and this was the big city which you'll laugh about when you see it <laughs> um question from chris what's your thoughts on the megan and harry netflix doco i think obviously i don't think it should be called a documentary because it hasn't explored both sides of the story but it's actually as I thought it might have been. I think it's so easy for people to perpetually hate the woman who comes in and changes someone's life, apparently. Um, people just have to be like that. It makes me cranky. And even though I don't know Meghan Markle, I didn't watch Suits or anything like that. I think what happened is revolting. I think learning about what happens inside the royal family is very enlightening. The revolting part was the press, uh, the media, and the trade-offs that were made, allegedly. Um, but yeah, inside the royal family, I mean, geez, like, they're, they're, imagine the induction to marry into that family. So yeah, I thought it was really interesting. It's obviously one side of the story. The royals will never release their side of the story. So yeah, good entertainment. Filled up a few hours on a Saturday. I liked it. Um, Vicky has asked, uh, hi, your skin is beautiful. Just wanted to know, do you get any cosmetic procedures done? Thank you, Vicky. I'm sure it doesn't look great today. Um, no, I don't. I get a little bit of baby Botox in my, I've got like a, like one line, like a diagonal line, not just one, <laughs> but a major one that goes down there and I get a little bit around my eyes but I like it to still I like to have expression you can still see I've got wrinkles um, but in terms of like resurfacing and those sorts of things I don't really like not not on the regular I'm actually considering doing pico laser after this summer um, for some pigmentation that I have but we'll see I like my skin to look like skin so I just make sure that it's hydrated and yeah it's it's fine to me if i have freckles and pigmentation it's no problem thank you for the compliment um vivian asks which bag or bags bring you the most joy it doesn't have to be logical well the one that mr addiction hates <laughs> the purple rain baguette i have to say that one brings a lot of joy because of the decision making process i went through to get it um at a point of time in my life when I got it and yeah and That's a connection pretty. to well I everybody knows I got it for my 40th I was supposed to be going to New York and 
we couldn't go because COVID. And that bag, New York City and fashion and all the things. So it's just, yeah. And every time I wear it, people love it. So, um, and Lizzie's asked again, I think I already asked you, but how do you deal with those ginormous spiders? I don't, I don't deal with them. I don't make my house a friendly place for them to live. And I have Mr. Addiction. My house. Yeah. My house. Our house. Mm, oh, it's ours now. Uh, well, it's, well, yes. I share with you. Faux pas. <laughs> it was a faux pas, honey. Yeah. Anything else you'd like to say to the vlog? Just keep me honest. <laughs> Just keeping me honest. You heard it here, guys. Righto. Well, um, check out the big smoke at Rocky Hamptons. Big smoke, aka Australian for city. Beef capital. Beef capital. Hold on. There's a cow. There's cows everywhere in this town. We'll drive through and I'll show you the cows. Uh, any cows in here? No. Oh. Okay, no cows there. There's none to here except for Look at this fancy hotel. The plaza. I bet you if you were booking into that, you'd think, oh yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be a nice one for you, Meredith, when you come visit Rocky. Five Star Plaza. Oh, we've got Porky's Hotel. Pigs are represented too. Good, good job. We've got a KFC. Every big town has a KFC. The test is, do they have McDonald's? Yes, there's McDonald's there. How wonderful is my husband? He just got fuel and look what he found for me. This is the best. It's my little pick me up. Oh, it's like non-alcoholic Aperol Spritz. That's what it reminds me of. We are in Sugar Central Serena. It's a big sugar mill there making sugar, not necessarily for the table. So where does the sugar go? Alcohol making? Yes? You're talking to me? Yeah, where do they sell the sugar? Off to everywhere. They sell raw sugar, refined sugar, whatever you want. Hmm. Sugar products. Lollies, manufacturing. There you go. Another country town. We've been through the beef capital and now we're in the sugar city. Heading into Mackay. Sugar cane as far as you can see. It is now um, just after 4 p.m. We left at 5 a.m. and we are we have arrived at our stop for the night. Um, and we are precariously reversing a trailer. It's Mr. Addiction's brother. Uh, <laughs> into a narrow entrance. So I will uh, do my advent calendar tomorrow, I think, because it's been a big day, hasn't it, Poppers? So um, thanks for accompanying us on this road trip, guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.